The thing that puts me in the best mood around Christmas time is when I know the Denver Broncos have made the playoffs. Something about, you know, a little drummer boy it takes me back to when I was a kid. What gets me in the Christmas spirit is once it starts getting cold. Having friends and family over to visit and to get together and have a good meal. It's traveling to be with family. But definitely once, once Christmas lights starts going up, um, I enjoy that very much. I'm a little child. My answer was going to be snowmen. And then I remembered that we live in southwest Georgia. The smell of a Christmas tree in the house. Oh, yeah. Um, once we put the tree up, it's game on. Christmas shopping does too. Exactly what is the Christmas spirit when you start talking about Christmas and kids? I mean, it's like, oh, yay, Christmas, we're going to be broke. Oh, no. Not the Christmas shopping. That does not put me in the mood. <laughs> when they start looking at the at the toy catalogs, you know that it's going to be expensive. Maybe it's because I wait to the last minute a lot of times that I don't like it as much. We find out that Kelly's pregnant with Lane. Brock came home from work one day in the middle of the day and said that he felt like he had just had a seizure. We figured she was going to be out of work for several, several weeks. Losing my husband of 56 years, he died on September the 30th. So we got a phone call from the hospital telling us that he had had sepsis and that he needed to come in immediately so that they could get started on his treatment option. Two years before that, my great uncle had died from sepsis. You don't expect your husband to get so sick so quickly. When I first got to college, um, like I just said, I was you know, in a new place. I didn't know anybody. I was really lonely. I was very homesick. And one of my professors approached me and asked if I would be willing to come to a Bible study with him on Sunday night. We needed the income. So we, we started saving. And she doesn't miss a day of work, so we never have to go into that money. Um, three months later, I lose my job. A week before Christmas. You go from selfishly wanting to be pregnant one minute to the next not knowing if your husband's going to be there to even raise the two boys that you already have. At the end of that semester, it was almost summer break. He said, can you do this next year? Do you, are you interested in doing this next year? And I, I definitely was. And I got a letter in my mailbox and it was from his wife. And um, one of the things he told me before Christmas break was um, to never let a day pass you by because you don't know when it's going to be your last. And um, his wife told me that he had been killed in a car accident. Everybody tells me that I'm so that I'm so strong, but it's just having faith to know that I'll see him again. You know, I don't hear a voice or anything, but I all of a sudden have this clear thought: it's going to be okay. And oh, by the way, I let you save up eight grand to keep you afloat for a while. Was God just reminding me that He's always there, like in the good times and the bad. And when you struggle the absolute most. I was really upset. I was really um, kind of angry for a few minutes. And then all of a sudden, I just, I just started smiling because I knew that he was home. I just think about how much he meant to me and what he did. And I don't think any of us realize how big and how powerful God is. When, when I went to Iraq, I saw, I saw how bad things can get. You know, that, that made me realize, you know, people, people need God. It will break you to know how involved he wants to be with you.